Hi LEGO fans! As a pretty serious LEGO collector, I really enjoy hunting out some of the more obscure sets and sharing them with you on my channel. So when I heard that LEGO was launching a new product line known as Former, I was really excited. And then when I heard it was going to be launched on Indiegogo, I definitely had to go go get me some of that. So today, I'm going to be unboxing, speed building, and reviewing set number 81000 Koi, 81001 Shark Skin, 81002 Splash Koi Skin, and 81003 Ink Koi Skin, collectively known as the LEGO Former Super Box. Effectively what we're getting here is a mechanical koi fish and some spare skins. We can choose the traditional design as seen on the outside of the box, or we can reskin it as a shark, a more abstract arty farty koi, and we even have a skin you can colour in yourself. That's assuming you've got more artistic talent than I have. As LEGO sets go, these are pretty rare and only about 6,500 of these were made. LEGO Former was conceived in early 2018 and launched on Indiegogo on September 27th. Using the words of LEGO's marketing people, LEGO Former is a premium LEGO experience designed for adults looking for a fun, engaging way to reconnect with their creative side. We also learned that this first bunch of LEGO Former products was not going to be available in stores. Instead, LEGO was launching a Kickstarter campaign, or more precisely, an Indiegogo campaign. This is where a company pitches a product they intend to make, and encourage people to commit to buying the products up front. People like me committing to buy the product are known as a backer. So on October 26 last year, I ponied up my $85 for this LEGO Former Super Pack. I wouldn't usually take a risk on a crowdfunded product, but I figured with the LEGO group behind this I couldn't lose. Delivery was estimated for mid-January, so I knew I was going to have to wait to get my hands on this. LEGO were really good during the waiting period, and I got regular updates. However, there was a bit of a bump in the road. I got an email on the 10th of January this year to let me know that UK backers would be getting their products, but the skin packs destined for the US market were delayed. That pushed delivery back to February the 6th. It was really frustrating watching all of the people in the UK get their products first. Another update on January 31st announced that some of the skin packs were water damaged during shipping from Europe. By now I'm thinking my LEGO former fish could have swam here quicker, but thankfully last week this package turned up at my door intact. So what is LEGO former? LEGO Former is intended to be a range of mechanical models that are cleverly designed but simple for adults to assemble. The idea is that LEGO should be relaxing to put together but stimulate creativity. LEGO produced a really nice video for the Indiegogo campaign, and I got the distinct impression this product is aimed at hipsters and millennials, so I'm probably not going to enjoy this. The Master Kit 81000 comes in a fairly understated white box. This contains all of the LEGO to make the mechanical fish and the standard koi skin. The set contains 293 pieces and is recommended for builders aged 12 plus. Despite being quite understated, I really like the art on the box. It's certainly eye-catching and it has quite a premium feel. On the side of the box, we're reminded that this comes from the creative minds of the LEGO former team. So hopefully we're going to see some more of these products in the future. Either that or these guys are going to end up working for LEGO friends. When it comes to the back of the box, it seems the designers ran out of ideas. Either that or somebody forgot to bring the crayons. But we do get to see the product's mantra, which is add a splash of creativity to your day. Or the same thing in French, or in Spanish. The skin packs have similar theming and vary between 31 and 33 pieces. Very similar again on the back of the packaging, and as you can see these skins actually come in cardboard envelopes. It also looks like we get some LEGO fasteners to attach these skins to the frame of the fish. As only about 6,500 of these have been made, I could easily flip this on eBay for a couple of hundred dollars. But that's no fun, so let's get this thing open and see what we've got inside. So firstly it looks like we've got this black lined box which gives it a pretty premium feel. Then we've got a bag of Lego, another bag of Lego, oh two bags of Lego, a thank you for buying me thing and then the skins. And of course, also, an instruction booklet. The instruction booklet has 70 pages, and here's a quick preview of what we're going to be building. The instructions have the same artwork and white minimalist feel. You might not be able to see this in the video, but some of the black from the inside of the box kind of came off on the instruction booklet. And there is some staining to the back of the instruction booklet also. It looks like some of the colours from the koi skin have bled through onto the instruction booklet, which is a little bit disappointing. 
This is the first of two skin sheets which shows the colour and the texture of the Koi's body. These are quite a lot thinner and less robust than I expected. The skin elements themselves simply pop out of the sheet. The second sheet includes the fins for the fish and if you look at this one this is actually double sided. We also get one, two, three bags of Lego which mostly contain Technic pieces. These will form the skeleton and moving body for the fish. And finally we get a nice little thank you card from the team for supporting the Lego former Indiegogo project. And that warm heartfelt message is also repeated in French and in Spanish. We'll come back to those skin packs a little bit later in the video. But for now it's build time! You're not going to miss a thing as today I'm going to wrap this up into a 60 second speed build! <laughs> And here is the rather impressive 81000 LEGO former Koi. Build time was 1 hour and 1 minute exactly. The build was somewhat technical and fiddly but overall a fun and rewarding experience. The build process basically breaks down into 3 stages. Firstly you assemble the base which contains all of the gearing. Then you assemble the flexible skeleton that makes up the body of the fish. And finally we attach these rather lovely skin pieces. These are interchangeable and we can easily remove these skin panels and replace them with different designs. We'll take a look at those other skins later in the video but first let's take a moment to appreciate the beauty and grace of the Lego former Koi in action. <laughs> There is some visible gearing in the base and you've probably noticed the crank handle. Let's go ahead and give that a little turn. One of the interesting things about the crank and the mechanism is if you try and crank it in reverse the pale gear bobs up and down and does not engage. That's a really neat piece of engineering and it prevents the fish from swimming backwards which is kind of useful if you're something like a shark. I'm not sure if running the mechanism in reverse would damage it but I appreciate the cool engineering used in this build. The fish is connected to the mechanism in the base using these three axles which kind of reminds me of the way one might operate a marionette. The mechanism itself is based on pretty simple engineering principles but is really well executed. Those three axles move from side to side causing the fish's body to flex as though in a swimming action. There's also some subtle rotational movement which we'll see in just a moment. And if you're anything like me you're probably wondering how this could be mechanised. I'm not going to attempt that today but I'm confident it could be achieved with some step down gearing. You could probably also build a much more elaborate and decorative base to conceal all of the mechanical engineering. I guess the next logical step is to start removing the skin. That will show us how the skeleton of the fish is put together and how it recreates that swimming action. Before we do, let's take a quick look at the skin itself so you can see how it's applied to the skeleton of the fish. The head of the fish is a really well executed piece of work and wraps neatly around the skull. Just like a real koi carp it has these sensitive barbels which it uses when foraging for food at the bottom of a pond. There are a pair of eyes which protrude from both sides of the fish's head and help to align the skin which covers the skull. You can see these actually penetrate the skin layer and have some really nice printed detail around the eye socket. The side panels come with this attractive pattern which reminds me somewhat of a shabunkin goldfish. If you look very carefully you can just about make out the printed scales which provide a nice 3D effect. Also very nice is the dorsal fin which has quite a ragged edge. This made me quite nervous when popping the piece out of the printed sheet because the skin pieces are quite thin but they are a lot more robust than they first appear. At the front where the head meets the body we have the pectoral fins. 
And if memory serves me right, which it often doesn't, these fins towards the back are the pelvic fins. As you can probably tell, I'm no marine biologist. The tail fin, also known as the caudal fin, is easy to recognise, and this must be the anal fin because it's near the... well, you know what I mean. There's another piece of skin which wraps neatly around the tail to complete the shape of the body. And that's how these cleverly designed and neatly printed skins can transform 293 pieces of Lego into a pretty convincing koi carp. As we worked around the fish, you probably noticed lots of white dots. White spots on a fish are not usually a good thing, but these are actually fasteners which connect to the skin and allow it to be snapped to the inner Lego skeleton. Here's a closer look. It's basically a fastener which connects to the holes in Technic Lego elements. The other end has a ridge which connects to the outer skin, after which you simply snap the skin using the fastener to the skeleton of the fish. Speaking of the skeleton, this actually gets exposed when the fish flexes in different directions. Here you can see the middle of the fish which flexes from side to side when the model is cranked. The LEGO Former Koi is a really cool model and has a very pleasing swimming action. I could watch this for hours, but I know you guys have a lower boredom threshold. So I guess it's time to find out what's inside a LEGO Former fish. Let's remove the skin and take a look inside. <laughs> So here we have our naked fish, which unsurprisingly isn't quite as impressive, but this does allow us to take a look at the gubbins which lie underneath. And here we have the discarded skin sections. I was kind of nervous when removing these because they do feel a tad delicate, but I'm pleased to confirm I haven't broken anything. Not just yet, anyhow. There are actually quite a range of different movements which come together to make the fish swim. The hinge section in the middle of the fish simply moves from side to side, and you can see that same motion replicated in the base mechanism. This is the framework that forms the head, as evidenced by the eyes and the barbels. This has a subtly different movement. It has a little side to side movement, but also a more pronounced rotational movement. As you can see, the axle that controls movement in the head not only gyrates side to side, but also has some rotational motion. The two middle sections are connected by a smooth brown pin, which allows the sections to flex freely. The head section, by contrast, is locked into place by a red axle. This allows the side to side movement, but also some rotational movement to transfer to the head. We have a similar arrangement connecting the tail to the body. There's a grey axle transferring rotational energy, and the tail clips into these holes here. Turning the crank handle generates the distinctive swishing movement you see in the tail. The pieces on the side here can be adjusted up and down and provide a convenient mounting point for the lower fins. Now clearly we can't leave our Piscean friend naked like this, so let's go ahead and pick out a new skin. As well as the Koi skin which comes with the standard 81000 set, LEGO also released three other skins which were available during the Indiegogo campaign. 81001 Shark Skin, 81002 Splash Koi Skin, and 81003 Ink Koi Skin. These were priced individually at 15 US dollars, but I got mine bundled in with the $85 Super Pack. These are all still sealed and I've got no idea what's inside other than the skins. So let's open up one of these and see what's inside the package. It's pretty much what I expected to see. We've got one single-sided skin sheet, one double-sided skin sheet, a pack of these white fasteners, and an instruction sheet. I think I'm going to leave the other two skins factory sealed, but I can't resist clothing our naked koi cop in a shark skin. Well, they say a leopard can't change its spots, but a fish can certainly change its skin. Of course, in reality, that's not true, but in 12 minutes, I was able to apply a new skin to this Lego former fish. I could have probably done it quicker, but I did find the head a little bit fiddly. The only thing that's changed here is the skin. The mechanism and the movement are exactly the same. Of all the additional skins available, I suspect this one was probably the best seller. The concept of having a mechanical shark is very cool. But if I'm brutally honest, I really don't like this as much as the koi fish. It just lacks that realism. The worst part is the mouth, which looks completely too small. 
The colour scheme is somewhat accurate, with the shark being white underneath and dark on top. This helps to camouflage the shark against the sky when it's hunting down below, and the dark colour on top helps to hide the shark when it's hunting near the surface. I expected the shark would be a cool display piece, but to be honest I'm going to go back and put on the koi skin again. Speaking of skins, I do have another two of those. I'm not going to open those up in this video, but here's a look at the 81002 Splash Koi skin and 81003 Ink Koi skin. I'm not comfortable enough in my artistic skills to fill in the Ink Koi skin, but I do think the Splash Koi skin looks very impressive and it would look really cool on display. But what if I wanted to display all of the skins at the same time? Well the good news is you could probably just go out and buy the parts to make the base, the mechanism and the fish skeleton. That amounts to about 260 pieces of Lego and I imagine I've already got a lot of these in my collection. Probably the most difficult pieces to get are going to be those white pieces in the base. I'm not sure how common those are. Either way it's probably going to be a lot cheaper to buy the parts off Bricklink than to buy some more Lego former boxes. Those are pretty scarce and they're selling for big money on eBay. So that was set number 81000, the koi fish from Lego Former, and of course the skins to go with it. This is a really neat product line and reminds me of something that might come out of Lego Ideas. I like the fact that it was launched on Indiegogo which made it kind of exciting to buy. It gave me a really good insight into the product development process, and it was interesting hearing from the team when things weren't going to plan. The execution wasn't perfect and there was some discoloration to the instruction booklet, but overall I really like this product, and especially the mechanical koi fish. The price point was relatively inexpensive for an adult oriented toy, and I had a lot of fun building this and showing it to you guys. Will this become a really popular Lego line? Honestly, I doubt it, but it would be really cool to see some of these products making their way into stores. At least if they don't, it makes mine super valuable. But what do you guys think? Did you manage to get your hands on the LEGO Former kit? And if you didn't, are you disappointed? If you did, which one's your favourite skin? If you enjoyed the video, a thumbs up is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. I release new LEGO review videos every week, and there's more than 250 videos on my channel. So if you're a first time viewer, don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other content. Thanks a million for checking out today's review, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next build video.